So good afternoon, thank you for coming. My name is Ayana Hernandez and I serve as Associate Vice Chancellor for Communications and Marketing with North Carolina Central University. Before we get started with today's news conference, I do want to acknowledge three guests that we have here. Ms. Tina Ruff with Durham Technical Community College, Chair of the Durham County Board of Commissioners, Brenda Howerton, and the Honorable Elaine O'Neill. The press conference will proceed in the following order. First, Dr. Johnson O. Akinleye, Chancellor of North Carolina Central University. He will be followed by Chief Damon Williams, who is Chief of Police and Director of Public Safety here at North Carolina Central University. Lieutenant Genevis Minor will come up from Durham Police Department. He will be followed by Major Walter Tate, who is also with Durham Police Department. Chancellor Akinleye will wrap up the event and we will have a few questions. One addition, Mr. Derek Stanfield will also address this news conference and he serves as the Student Government Association President. Thank you. Good afternoon. It is uh, my pleasure to have you here this afternoon. We want to thank you for coming on, on such a very short notice albeit a very, very important uh, press conference. North Carolina Central University and the entire community here were impacted by a tragedy that occurred on Saturday, September 18, 2021, on a surface parking lot between Dupree Street and Lawson Avenue. I extend Condolences to the families of the two individuals who died in the senseless act of violence. As Chancellor of North Carolina Central University, I want to take this, this very opportunity here to provide additional information about the details of this particular isolated incident. Please know that this case remains active and is being investigated by the Durham Police Department, who are also here with us today. Let me begin by assuring everyone, the NCCU community and the public at large, that our campus is safe and remains a safe and healthy environment. My sincere thanks and gratitude to the NCCU Police and Public Safety Department, along with Durham Police Department, for quickly responding to the scene and for immediately working to attend to the two victims while also ensuring the safety of those who were on campus attending our first home football game. NCCU Police at the surface parking lot between Dupree Street and Lawson Avenue responded within seconds of hearing the gunshot close by. Their quick response saved lives and protected our students, faculty and staff, fans and guests who were still assembled in the O'Kelly Riddick Stadium. After the lockdown for the stadium and surrounding area was lifted, NCCU police and Durham police were meticulous in personally escorting individuals who parked in the Latham parking deck to their cars over the course of three hours. You will hear more about the incident from Chief Williams momentarily. He will also correct information regarding the exact location of this tragic incident. While unforeseen tragedies such as these occur. This one took place too close to the heart of North Carolina Central University, where our students live and learn. 
violence of any kind anywhere is unquestionable. Over the past three years, we have invested more than $3 million in state-of-the-art security technology on our campus. More than 900 360 degree cameras have been installed in buildings and all around the campus. We have many blue lights all around the campus. We've installed card key entry for all of our buildings, prop door alarms, and more personnel that patrol all corners of the university. These investments have yielded positive results in quickly investigating and solving incidents and, and closing cases. The NCCU Police Department is vigilant and uses a multi-level approach to campus safety and security, including foot, bike, segway, and vehicular patrol of the campus interior and exterior perimeter. They regularly conduct training exercises throughout the academic year with our emergency response and emergency management teams, as well as with the city and county emergency entities, which proved valuable on Saturday. However, what we cannot control are crimes on the street of Durham and around the public perimeter of our campus that impact our campus, such as the event on Saturday. We are a public institution and an urban campus. We cannot close up our campus, our university with iron fences and gates. This press conference is a call to action. We are pleading with our city, our county, and state officials to commit to devoting more resources and attention to combating the issues of crime in Durham so that the lives of those on our campus, in the neighborhoods around us, and the larger Durham community can be protected. This is a matter of health and safety for our students, our faculty, staff, and the residents of Durham. We will not live in fear or have our health and well-being at risk due to gun violence and crime around our community. It has to stop today. As Chancellor, I lead the charge to stand up for and safeguard our students and all members of our community, as well as visitors and guests that are coming to our campus. Saturday's incident should not be repeated anywhere in our city. I ask that our public sector partners join us in this fight to protect NCCU and the Durham community. Durham is a vibrant community and the safety of its citizen should be a matter of utmost priority. I am happy at this time to present our Chief of Police, Chief Damon Williams, who would speak. And then, of course, after you've heard all of the presentations, we will take a few questions from the press. Once again, we want to thank you for taking the time to come here today. Thank you. Chief. So good, good afternoon, everybody. One of the first things I want to do is praise the officers and first responders who responded to this incident on Saturday. Um, our partners here in Durham with the Durham Police Department, uh, the Durham Tech Police Department, and the Duke University Police Department for assisting us in this matter. Before I speak, I'm going to turn it over to the uh, Durham City Police Department to provide a statement, and then I'll come back to the microphone. Good afternoon. I'm Lieutenant Genevis Minor with the Durham Police Department's Public Affairs Unit, and I'm here to introduce Major Walter Tate of our Investigative Service Bureau. He will be briefing you on the homicide investigation that occurred Saturday, September 18th in the 700 block of East Lawson Street. 
we will be discussing this case only and will not be discussing any additional cases at this time. Major Tate. Good afternoon. The Durham Police Department are investigating a fatal shooting that happened Saturday night in the 700 block of East Lawson Street. Officers responded to the sound of gunshots in the parking lot adjacent to Latham Parking Deck on the campus of North Carolina Central University shortly after 9 p.m. on Saturday. When they arrived, excuse me, when we arrived, <clears throat> we found two men who had been shot. The men identified as Shamari Brown, 21, and Tavius Rose, 18, both of Durham, were taken to a local hospital where they died a short time later. Based on our preliminary investigation, the suspect vehicle is described as a black Nissan Altima and the incident does not appear to be random. This case remains under investigation and there are no further details available at this time. Anyone with information is asked to call Investigator Mitchell at 919-560-4440 extension 29335. Our Crime Stoppers at 919-683-1200. Crime Stoppers pays cash rewards for information leading to arrests and felony cases, case, excuse me, and callers never have to be identified. Thank you. So some of the things that we want to clear up that I think have been misreported uh, is the specific location of the incident. This incident occurred not in our parking deck, but on our open parking surface lot between Dupree and Lawson Street. I think there had been some confusion about where this had taken place. Uh, and so I wanted to make sure that we clarify that uh, for your presence. Um, also, as Major Tate said, this was uh, uh, not a random act. Um, we don't believe it to be so. Uh, I do want to say that the University Police Department, along with our partners here in Durham, have taken great measure to ensure the safety of the students on North Carolina Central University's campus. Uh, like the Chancellor said, we made heavy investments in ensuring uh, that our students have a safe environment to, to come to learn, live, and play. So. Um, the there were some questions also about the stadium and if the individuals in the stadium were put in any danger. Uh, in no time, of course, what we wanted to do at first was recognize that we had a situation occurring and we wanted to keep those patrons in our stadium safe. Uh, we did go into a short lockdown while we conducted a search for the individuals that may have been involved in this process. Uh, and we asked everybody to shelter in place until we could clear the area and ensure that everybody was safely uh, returned to their vehicle. Uh, working with the Durham Police Department, um, I think that night the cooperation and the spirit of cooperation to ensure that everyone was safe and everyone left campus safely was truly known. So I want to really reach out to them and thank them for all the resources that they assisted us in providing. Uh, once again, uh, the Durham Police Department is going to be taking the uh, active lead in the investigation uh, and we don't want to impugn or compromise anything dealing with that. So we're going to provide details as they come out at a later date. Greetings, everyone. I am Derek Stanfield, student body president for the 2021-22 academic year here at NCCU. It is with a heavy heart that I join you all today. Before I begin, on behalf of our student body, I would like to express my deepest condolences to the family members of those involved in the tragic incident that took place on Saturday. As a member of the Durham community, I also pray for the safety of everyone in our community. Saturday's occurrence is reflective of the growing issue of violence in the city of Durham and its overflow onto our campus. I'm confident in our university's commitment to ensuring the safety of the members of our university community. The Student Government Association will continue to support and assist the efforts of university police to provide a safe environment for all of our students to learn. Our students would like to, our students would like to assist the city of Durham in their efforts their continued efforts 
in these efforts and to help foster a safer environment for our students. I would also like to commend the first responders along with the city of Durham for their in instant action in regard to the incident that, that took place on campus. So at this time, we will open it up for a few questions. If you can raise your hand to be acknowledged, yes. And identify your station. Hi there, uh, Lauren Thomas with Spectrum News One. Um, were any of the victims students? And uh, is there any, any information on a person of interest? Um, let me assure you that um, the first thing that we did was to ascertain that um, the victims and the assailant were not NCCU students. And of course, they were not also not patrons uh, at the football game because the, ref the rest of us were in the stadium, uh, actually locked down uh, while this was going on. Now, I cannot speak to the identity of the victim or the assailant, but I can let the, uh, uh, the chief of police address that, if you will. You yeah. want to? So Due to the nature of the current investigation, that information is not available at this time. Yes. Hi, Sarah Kruger with WREL. Um, we've been hearing that, you know, you mentioned there are many surveillance cameras on campus. We've been hearing that there have been some problems with them and that they are not always working. Can you comment on if the cameras in this area were working and if so, what they are able to capture, if there will be an assistance to the investigation? Well, let me first correct the um, assumption that the cameras aren't working. We spent $3 million on this technology, and they work perfectly. As a matter of fact, within minutes of the incident, the reason why they were able to identify the car that was involved in the uh, shooting was because of one of the cameras installed in the lift and packing deck. It worked very well, and they were able to identify that car very well. So it's, it's, it's paying dividends for us. If I could, I think some clarity to that question is this, is that we, we provide access to some locations around campus so that they can see those areas, but they do not have total access. So the assumption sometimes is that, is that the cameras are not, working, are not working, but those cameras all feed into a central network. Let's, let's stick to it. Yes. Well, um, in the past, we've met with uh, city officials, uh, with our student body, um, some members of our community, and we've, if we've provided some resources that we believe will be helpful to uh, this community. One of such is the shot spotter that we asked them to install around the university. This is a technology that's been used in many other urban cities across the country across the country. And um, we know that nothing is a panacea for everything, but we believe that that would help in the identification of those who are committing these um, heinous crimes, and that yet is to be determined. We're still working with the city on that. Uh, that's one. Um, we've also been grateful to have the, 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 the city of Durham to engage in an MOU with us that now gives uh, our campus police department some control of some of the streets that are, you know, are in the perimeter of our campus so that we can actually respond faster and quickly into the scene on this public street. But there are so many other uh, resources, uh, such as putting more patrol uh, in this area. Um, and of course, putting funds in the community and um, uh, uh, surrounding the university to create jobs and educate people who may be involved in activities that we don't you know, approve and encourage. So these are people who know what to do. And we have pleaded and we have submitted items to them before. And so we would love to see them become more engaged, uh, more proactive, and pay attention to the needs uh, of our community.
received any um, questions about the security of students or any students hesitant to refer to students? Well, because of the rapid uh, response that we had on Saturday due to these uh, uh, wonderful uh, uh, officers, um, there was no one within the stadium and on campus uh, that was in danger. And so we put out uh, our notice through our communication office immediately to the students and to the staff and to uh, family and friends that the campus is safe. And as such, we didn't get any uh, you know, reactions or responses from, from our community. Yeah. Yes. So, of course, we take the feedback of our students uh, highly in, in, within high regard. One of the things that we're going to do this week is we're going to do some town hall talks. We're going to have discussions with our students. We want to hear what they think um, and what's on their minds. And we also want to share with them the facts because there's a lot of things going around on social media that are not factual. So as we have those discussion, we're going to be open. We want to hear the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we want to address those with our students to give them a chance to, to hear how the response went, what happened, what are we doing to be uh, proactive on this campus, how are we being safe. And we've already started that process. And what we hear from our students is that they, we, they see us engaged on a daily basis. Um, they see the officers out on foot. They engage them in the residence hall, so they know that we take their safety very seriously. Uh, it is our, our number one goal. We see ourselves as the guardians of the nest. And it takes all of us to keep this campus safe. So we're going to engage them this week. Uh, we're going to have some great discussions. We're going to have some great dialogue. Um, we even go out. Just last week, we were out with students uh, doing a safety campus tour. Uh, we rode around campus and looked for areas that are dark and, and that present dangers to them. Um, so we can repair those things day and night. So we're constantly engaged. And so we want to give them that avenue to share their concerns and also hear the facts from the police department. They're going to be scheduled throughout the week, throughout the week, and they'll be done more in a more intimate setting with the students. And I'll um, add a little bit about the student reaction. Uh, one thing that we champion here, uh, as Chief Williams said, is campus safety. And at no point uh, during the incident were students out of the loop due to the amount of notifications that we were given about the constant updates of everything that was occurring. Uh, there, of course, was a level of shock being that it occurred so close to home and in such an untimely manner, but we're, we're, we're in support of university police and their commitment to our safety, and we look forward to those town halls as well, Chief. Yeah, well, I'll you. Chancellor, as you probably know, there was another shooting this afternoon that was right across the street from the communications building, um, not on campus, but certainly right beside it. So it, you know, it's feeling like this is now well, what I would say to you is really s simply re-emphasize the comments that I've made about the safety uh, on campus, safety around the streets, the perimeters of the campus. The particular uh, uh, event that you are responding to um, are now in the hands of the Durham police, and I don't have anything to say to it again. This is not an event that happened on our campus. And before we will be closing, but before we do close, I would like to acknowledge another member of North Carolina Central University's leadership team who is with us, and that is Ms. Akula Johnson Matherson, who serves as Vice Chancellor for Administration and Finance. So thank you all for coming. If anyone needs spelling, titles, please let me know and I will give you that information. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.